Hello, biology students. I'm Greg Kowalki. I teach biology at Cleveland High School. Today, we are going to be working through lesson six of the population ecology unit, where we are going to work on our project and present our project. Before we get started, I want you to remember that you and your health come first. Work at your own pace. You've already learned so much about answering the questions of why has the orca population declined in Puget Sound and how we can protect orca populations in the future. Today we're going to start working on our project and using all of the tools we've learned about so far. We'll be planning our project, working on the project, presenting the project to someone you know, and submitting your orca project to your teacher. To accomplish this, we're going to be using a variety of tools. The first tool is your learning tracking tool. Grab that and review the lessons so far. We've learned about orcas. We've learned about the stakeholders in the Salish Sea. We've learned about the impacts of humans upon ecosystems. We've learned about food webs, and we've learned about keystone species. All of these tools will help you answer those questions. Why has the orca population declined in Puget Sound? And how can we protect orca populations in the future? In addition, we will add 6.1, the Orica Project Planning Worksheet, and we will be reviewing the project rubric along with the Recovery Task Force recommendations. I want you to also go back to your notes and review which goal and recommendation you planned to explore further whenever you were introduced to the project in Lesson 4. Also, grab the partner if you chose to work with a partner and begin planning with them. Let's run through the steps to complete the project. You've already picked your goal and recommendation that you would like to highlight with the project. Next, you need to decide what format you'll use for the project. Will you make a PowerPoint presentation for stakeholders? Will you build an infographic or a poster? Will you record a podcast or a video? If you don't know which one you want to use, ask your teacher. If you come up with another format other than those listed, please ask your teacher. I know I like to see inventive new formats and to see students do cool things with them. You also want to complete the ORCA project planning worksheet. This is an organizer to help make sure that you are meeting all of the requirements of the rubric. It allows you to outline which goal and recommendation that you will focus on, what data you are going to use to support your argument, how your recommendation is going to affect the biodiversity of Puget Sound, which of the scientific concepts we have learned in this unit will help your argument, what your revision to the recommendation is and how you will defend that revision, as well as a place to record the sources that you are drawing upon to get your data to support your argument. You need to make sure that the sources are recorded and you need to do this in MLA format. MLA format is not only an industry standard, it is also the default free one that you can get using EasyBeb and other online bibliography generating software. If you work on your project, remember to refer back to the rubric repeatedly and to use it like a checklist as you complete your project. Another resource for this is to go back to Lesson 4, where we introduce the project and look at the checklist there. I always recommend you also have somebody else look at your project with the rubric in hand to make sure that you have adequately covered everything that is required of the project. When your project is ready, present it to somebody you know, somebody in your household, or maybe a friend or family member who is not in your household. Just make sure it's not somebody in biology. You want to hear somebody else's outside opinion. There are a lot of ways that you could do this. It doesn't matter. You can email it to somebody. You can use video chat. You can talk to them over the phone. That's all fantastic. Just remember your social distancing. Make sure that you give them an opportunity to take questions uh, and give them as good answers as you possibly can. Also invite their feedback. With all of these, with their questions, your answers, their feedback, revise your project based upon those. Make sure all those questions are answered in your presentation. 
make sure that their feedback is included. They may have some very good ideas on how to improve your presentation. Just there again, make sure that you are answering everything that is expected in the rubric. As we wrap up lesson six and your project, let's go through the checklist for the lesson. The first and the most important thing to check is does your project meet all of the criteria covered in the rubric? This is the most important part because these projects are there for you to demonstrate that you have gotten the learning from the unit and that you can use that learning to apply it to a real world problem. And this is definitely a real world problem. The Southern resident orcas in the Puget Sound are still on decline. The orca task force is still meeting and making recommendations to try to stop and maybe even reverse that decline. You are demonstrating that you understand the science behind this and that you'd be able to make recommendations too. If you do not cover everything on the rubric, change your presentation, make sure it does. Have you presented your project to somebody you know? This is also important. This is a presentation. It is being meant to be shown to other people. I also suggest that you hand the person you present it to a copy of the rubric. Have them double check that you have covered everything that's expected in the rubric. Many times you think it's very clear that you hit a point on the rubric, and it is not. Having someone else take a look at it is a good way to say, oh, you know, I missed that. It wasn't obvious. Get their feedback, answer their questions, and change your project to reflect their feedback and their questions. Make sure you're covering everything that they expect out of your presentation. Third, if you worked with a partner, check in with them. Did they feel like you communicated and collaborated well? Did they learn the things that they needed to learn from the unit? And did they feel like they were a full participant in this project? It's important for them to learn this too. Make sure that you both learned what you needed to out of this project. And the last thing to do is to submit your finished project to your teacher. Your teacher would have provided instructions either directly or more likely posted them on Schoology along with all the rubric and everything else you need for the project. Okay, this has been Gregor Walke. This is lesson six of the population ecology unit. Be safe, be awesome, wash your hands.